They're barrier islands, just like anything you see on the coast or anywhere else. The thing that gives us the, the greatest opportunity out here with Cat Island is the ability to take something from scratch and to create the type of wildlife habitat that we want. We had all this material, we had to put it someplace, and if we can make habitat improvements, it's a win-win for everybody. It's a huge success story. People are trying to duplicate this all over the world. Cat Island, a solution to a port's problem, a shield from waves in the lower bay, a sanctuary for thousands of migrating birds, a model for the world. Cat Island is the reconstruction of the island chain that used to lie here in Green Bay decades ago. So those islands acted as barrier islands. Once you get a north wind, you get a lot of force, and those islands were important to protect the, the wetlands at the base of the bay. The whole structure was considerably different un until uh, the, around the 1970s. In the 1970s, a combination of shoreline development, unusually high water, and intense storms doomed the island chain and the important wildlife habitat it provided. The islands reached a point where Mother Nature's forces really got the best of, of them and could not, could not hold out. Nutrients and toxins carried from the land and habitat loss added to the bay's problems. In the 1980s, Green Bay was designated as an area of concern, a degraded area in need of cleanup and restoration. A group of committed local experts helped to see this restoration through, a project at least 20 years in the making. The committee organized a, a, a conference, a symposium in 1994, which brought in uh, people active in the local area from the university, from the various natural resource agencies, as well as those who are active in other parts of the Great Lakes. And from that several days that we spent together, the number one recommendation for a high priority, the highest priority, was to restore the Cat Island chain. The idea seemed simple. Transport clean dredged material from the bay and repurpose it to create Cat Island. The port would save hundreds of thousands of dollars in transporting sediment for disposal, instead using it to recreate the former island chain. However, the cost of reconstruction would be large. But with nearly $20 million in funding from various sources, including the Federal Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, construction began. What we're doing here today is a combination hydraulic and mechanical dredging operation. Uh, the contractor is dredging the material from Green Bay Harbor. They're putting in barges. Uh, the uh, tugs take the material to the dredge behind me and it uh, hydraulically sucks it out of the barges and pumps it into the cells of Cat Island. The operation relocates more than 140,000 cubic yards of sediment every other year. That's enough to cover more than 20 football fields in three feet of sand and silt. And yet, this is just a drop in the bucket for Cat Island. It will take up to 10 years and 1.5 million cubic yards to fill a single cell. The project could take up to 40 years to completely fill all three islands. The island fulfills two purposes. One is its habitat restoration, and that really did provide the overall impetus to get this here. But at the end of the day, um, the port got involved and the Corps of Engineers got involved because we also have to find a place to put dredge material from keeping the shipping channel open. Dredging clears the channel for 200 ships, a vital contribution to Green Bay's economy. Cat Island also acts as a wave barrier to the lower bay, allowing growth of native plants and restoration of critical habitat. We're really trying to find ways that we can sort of scale up these small research and restoration methods to sort of actively restore a very large area. Researchers from UW-Green Bay have been planting wild celery, wild rice, and hard stem bulrush. Native plants help create competition for invasive plants like Eurasian water milfoil that have started to gain a stronghold in the bay. They also provide both food and habitat for fish and other wildlife in the area. It sort of depends on where we are, but um, the wild celery has been doing much better than anticipated. Um, we would plant nine plants per square meter at our sites, and um, in this one that we're coming up to today, we counted 100 plants in that same square meter that we would have only planted nine last year. 
So I'd say that, you know, that's a pretty good outcome. By monitoring results of habitat restoration and gathering more data, researchers can see how species respond. They were surprised at how quickly birds recolonized the islands. There's about 30 different species that come through the state every year, and to our surprise, we detected basically all of those in 2013 right away. To survive long flights, migratory birds depend on healthy stopover habitat, like Cat Island, to rest and refuel. The Cat Island wave barrier creates a lot of stopover habitat for a lot of species, especially birds, and that's very critical if an area doesn't have enough good habitat to hold enough resources, these birds need to keep moving and looking for other areas. And if those other areas don't exist, a lot of these species do not make it up to their breeding ground to successfully breed. Egrets have discovered this new fishing ground and can be found all around the bay. Their long legs and spear-like bills make them great at catching fish. Caspian, foresters, and common terns can also be seen fishing here. Floating platforms have been created to encourage nesting. The last two years, we've had uh, success raising foresters' terns and common terns, which, you know, that also hasn't happened here in a long time. Another very special bird, which only breeds on undisturbed open shorelines, has also returned to Cat Island. This past year, we had uh, uh, a pair of uh, piping plovers uh, show up and uh, they nested on the island and they successfully raised three young. It's been over 75 years since we've had a successful nesting pair in the, the lower bay. They're a federally endangered species because they need undisturbed Great Lakes beach habitat and that is not a common thing anymore. The birds were fitted with leg bands to monitor their success and it seems fitting that they made their migration dressed in local colors, packer green and gold. Researchers will anxiously await their return. Repeated nesting will be a long-anticipated success for Cat Island. I feel grateful that uh, so many people stuck with this for so many years because it did take a long time. Well, there's been a lot of problems and everything, but this is a gem. This is a special place. A special place with global problems. Erosion, pollution, and loss of habitat. The world can learn from the restoration of Cat Island, but the long-term results will depend on a commitment to ongoing stewardship. I think that it's a success story in the making, I guess I would say. I, I think that we have a lot of work to do out here still, and we don't want to get too, too comfortable with just putting a wave barrier up and thinking that it's all going to come back naturally. There's going to be a lot of vegetation management and so on, so it's a project that, that continues. It's a win for the environment, it's a win for, the, for wildlife that use this environment, and it's a win for the port because it helps us keep our port open longer and, and serves as a beneficial reuse of some of the material we're pulling out of the bay. It is a success story, and uh, it's a story with a happy ending where the ending really never ends. <laughs>